Um, have you guys ever endured in a relationship for so long, and when you guys break up, you no longer like know who you are or know how to be alone? Well, Romeo fell in love at first sight with Juliet, and now they're both dead. So, have you? <laughs> when you have a breakup, sometimes like you're in your room and you feel like you're dying, or like you hit up the club because you want to forget about them, but like in reality, you're going to the club because of them. So, good morning. My name is Rihanna Cortell, and um, many people are led to believe that love is just love. However, that is not the case. There are eight types of love, and I would first like to start off with arrows. So this is like um, that affectionate love. It's more selfish desires, so sexual and physical attraction and infatuation. There's philia, so this is like based on friendships. And yeah, it just grows through friendship. Um, storage, which is familiarity and kinship. So if you don't know what kinship is, it has to relate with family. So it's more of that like brotherly love and like, yeah, like how your parents would love you. Um, there's Ludus, so there's a girl, she's like holding hands with another guy and like that would be my reaction. And um, this, is the, <laughs> this is the uncommitted love, so like, it's kind of like when you're dating someone and you don't want to see them with someone else and then they're with someone else and you're like, okay. But like, it's kind of your fault because you won't commit. So this is important though because this is like the teasing and the playful kind of affection. Um, then there's mania. So just like it sounds maniac. So it becomes this obsessive, um, jealous type of love. and. That one has a bad word, so. Um, I ran into your ex with my car, and then there's pragma, so I used my mom and my dad. This is like that um, type of love where you compromise, so like you get to that stage where you're like in, you're like a married couple, basically. This is Philadia, so <laughs> that's Kanye loving himself. Like um, so self-love is the best kind of love, so Philadia is self-love. And a game has to do more with like the love of nature and like, like let's say God. So um, I believe this is a very important type of love. However, I don't want to like affiliate it with religion. So today I would like to explain why philodia, otherwise known as self-love, is the most important type of love amongst the eight types of love. Philodia is vital because it can lead to greater life satisfaction and motivation or healthier habits. Um, Philadia is the most important type of love amongst the eight because it leads to greater satisfaction. When you hold yourself in high esteem and know you are fulfilling your life and fulfilling your purpose in life, you tend to have more enjoyment and a more positive attitude towards the future. You are not ca you are not capable of loving others if you don't love yourself. So just like what I said, like with the whole relationship thing, not being able to commit, you need to be able to love yourself first. And it just helps you realize that you are the only one with your unique traits, qualities, and potentials. It gives a self of confidence when you accept who you are, you feel no need to counterfeit someone or compare yourself to others, and that is the most powerful and inspiring feeling ever. Um, as Philadelphia leads to a greater life, this goes to show that it impacts your life in many aspects, such as your health. Philadelphia helps an indi individual's motivation for healthier habits. Lindsay Holmes from Huffington Post says, self-compassion may be the motivation we need to get ourselves to the gym or kick that smoking habit. Research published in the journal Health Psychology found that building, building yourself up instead of tearing yourself down can lead to better health decisions. So another quote I found is Gandhi once said, your beliefs become your thoughts, your thoughts become your words, and your words become your actions. Your actions become your habits, your habits become your values, and your values become your destiny. Kind of like, I could use this as an, as an example, like wanting to like get a better body. So you believe you want a better body, so those are your thoughts. Now you're like, okay, I want to get a 24 hour pass. So those are your words, and you're like, well you get it. And then so those words become your actions, and then you start going to the gym, you make it a habit, you see the progress in yourself, and then it just becomes your destiny, I guess. Now you're like slim, thick, or lean, or whatever you want to be. Um, <laughs> so
So um, another example is my own, oh, okay, well. In conclusion, out of the eight types of love I have displayed for you, philodia is the most vital type of love. Philodia leads to a greater satisfaction of life and healthier habits, in increasing your happiness and self-worth. I want to leave you off with this. You came into the world with nothing. Oh, five minutes? Oh, that, I thought that meant seconds, sorry. <laughs> okay, so I want to go back to my example. The example of my Uncle Sim, so he's actually in critical condition in the hospital. He's obese with diabetes, so like, I guess you could say he didn't have those healthy habits and he couldn't do things with us like go to Palm Springs or spend New Year's with us because he was in bed or like in the hospital. So that just proves like you need to take care of yourself, you need to love yourself, and then you can enjoy life to the fullest. And Amanda McMillan from Times, says that people are doing a lot of things to stay healthy. They're jogging, they're riding their bikes, eating fruits and vegetables, and we want to remind people that there's one more thing you need to work on that can also have a big, big effect on your physical and emotional well-being. So, and long story short, take care of your body. And in conclusion, out of the eight types of love I have displayed for you, Valadia is the most vital type of love. Philodia leads to a greater satisfaction of life and healthier habits, increasing your happiness and self-worth. Okay, now I want to leave off with you that you came into this world with nothing and you're going to leave with nothing. So what's the point of living life if you don't love yourself? And what is the point of jealousy and hatred when nothing else matters except for yourself? Thank you. All right, Dust, mm -hmm. what did you think? Um, the intro was good. Uh, it informed me what I was going to be learning about. Um, the visuals are awesome. It helped me understand the different types of love I didn't even know about. And um, she transitioned well with the visuals. And uh, these examples will explain love. And overall, I thought it was a good speech. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, I, I do like the uh, opening. You've got uh, an interesting, good visualization kind of with a negative example to go along with it, and there's an okay transition to what the uh, subject is. Uh, it seems to me like you have two different purposes here. One is to define the different kinds of love, and the other is to talk about how important philodia is as a form of love. and. Uh, the second one is the one that gets the most development and actually has some research behind it. And that topic doesn't come up until two minutes and 40 seconds into the speech. So if that's really the main purpose, the specific purpose of the speech, so that's a long way into the speech to be getting to it. I don't object to the idea that you have all those definitions in the background, except that there's so many of them. And the, the truth is that there's not really development of any of them except the one that you really want to talk about. So I think that that whole first section probably could be condensed a lot and you could, and you could come down to explaining the basic theory that there are uh, eight kinds of love, which by the way, I think we need a source for. I assume it came from 
uh, a class that you took. Uh, if you took an interpersonal communications class, for instance, it probably comes right out of the Adler text that uh, I use in my class because I know that they have a section where they talk about that, but it could be another class. I know that you did, you didn't, this did not spontaneously appear in your head, these Greek words and the different kinds of love. So you came across them someplace. That's what you need to tell us. And here's the way I think you could probably uh, simplify it. You could say, uh, there's a concept that comes from whoever your source is. Uh, as they explain it, there are, it's believed that there are eight kinds of love ranging from X to Y that often have very simple differences between them. For example, the love that you have for a friend versus the compromising love that a relational couple needs to have. Today, I want to talk about philodia, which is a very specific kind of love. And then you cut down two minutes of your of the opening section so that we're now focusing on the section that you really are going to develop in your speech. Because I was sitting here making comments about, well, I don't hear any sources being cited. I get all these descriptions, and she's just going through slide after slide. She's got some clever definitional visuals on each of the slides. I thought that worked pretty well, but eight things, and you're going through them pretty quickly. My guess would be most people are going to have a hard time remembering more than a couple of them and what the difference between them is. So if, you're not, if that's not ultimately the goal, to be able to distinguish all eight, and it's really to talk about philodia, then let's get to that one and make that the subject. Because that's where you actually start to develop why it's important, you know, why self-love. And we're not talking just about you know, you know, being enamored of yourself like Kanye is, but rather having some sense of that you are a valuable person, that there are things that you need to decide for yourself that are going to make a change in your life, they're going to help you sustain yourself, and, that, and then you can get an organizational structure that talks about those kinds of issues. I think that's kind of what's missing here. Because when you get to the topic, I'm going, okay, this is good. You know, she's, she's got this, she's starting to cite some information there, she's got two or three pieces of data that she's given us at the beginning, where is this going to go? And I got one of the supporting points appears to be health, but I'm sure there's more to it than that, and it just isn't very clear what's going on there. So yeah, I feel like you've got kind of a half a thing here that's going on. It's, it's like you've got the definitions that are the, really not part of your main speech. They just kind of introduce the concept, and you need to cut that down. And then when you get to the concept, you've got a couple of really good ideas on that, but it needs to be expanded more so that you can talk about it and it needs to be organized a little bit more. The visuals that you had at the beginning, like I said, I think maybe cut down to a couple just to illustrate what the different kinds of love are and then find some more things that you can do for Philadia. And it was strange to me because once that became the subject of your speech, you immediately got off that slide, went back to your title page, and left that up there for the rest of the time until you came back to the end of the speech, and then you went, zoomed back to that you know, picture of Kanye. I'm going, well, that just feels awkward because it's like there's all this stuff that's got nothing to do with what you're talking about up on the screen there, and a, a blank screen would have been better, and then if you needed to come back to that last slide, that would be fine. Or maybe some other things, like you're talking about how your self-respect has an influence on the way you lead your life. Uh, the example of your uncle who's not able to do some of those things, i kind of thinking, well, so are you saying that your uncle didn't uh, love himself enough to take care of himself, and that that's really what explains all these kinds of things? And how do you know that? And I think you'd have to give us a little bit more detail on that. And, and if you cut down on the other stuff, you'd have been able to do that more. All right. Thank you.